Politics, the global language. Here is a single person. Look how confident he is. Self-assured and decisive, he is unafraid to share his thoughts. He heartily engages in casual banter with his peers and shares a racist joke with close friends. He is adequately able to differentiate between right and wrong. But wait, here are more people, and yet more. Note that all of a sudden he is unable to perform even the simplest tasks. Decisions are becoming difficult for him, and he can no longer determine what is good and what is bad. He is reduced to little more than a savage brute, and is in need of direction from another individual. This is where politics comes into play. But what is politics? Politics is a way of absolving yourself of the burden of responsibility by allowing someone else to tell you what to do, and then to lie to you to assure you that what you are doing is okay. Politics is very much like a pigeon, having both a left and a right wing. Advocates of the left wing respect the right of everyone to say whatever they please, whenever they please, unless of course it offends somebody else who is saying whatever they please. A left winger will even respect the rights of those on the right wing to air their often contradictory views. Right wingers do not respect the rights of anyone, and often attack left wingers with sharp stones or shards of glass and metal. It may be easier to picture the left wing as a small innocent child, full of hope and wonder, naively accepting everything around it, and the right wing as a gorilla, with a machine gun, with a shark strapped to it, and a pointy hood. All countries have a political system, even the barren wastes of Scotland, where power is obtained through the ownership of shortbread. In the United States of America, politics is used as a measure of how evil a nation is. Heartless capitalists are embraced with open arms by Uncle Sam, and are supplied with a near endless selection of sitcoms of varying levels of mediocrity. Those with ideologies promoting a social conscience, however, such as communism, are often laid to waste in prolonged military campaigns. Americans abhor the idea of helping those less fortunate than themselves, and any suggestion that they should is met with an overwhelmingly negative response involving guns or, in extreme cases, the humiliating renaming of foodstuffs. The people of the United States of America also worship democracy, a hungry god who assumes that everybody is intelligent enough to have a say and make decisions which will affect everybody else. Americans like to feed this deity with votes and hot dogs, and pray to it by repeating the words, Greatest Nation on Earth. This helps to reassure the people of America that the ownership of guns and morbid obesity are the cornerstones of civilization. Some countries, like China, believe in a form of politics called communism, which promotes the belief that all men are equal, even those who would be considered by some nations to be culturally subservient. It teaches that we should all work together for a better world, with each person as valuable as the last. But communism is much like using tofu as a meat substitute. It sounds a nice idea, but in reality it's hideously distasteful and just doesn't work. But those who toil long enough under the oppressive yoke of communism soon find themselves craving the plump, juicy sausage of capitalism. Without politics, the world would fall into disarray. Luckily, there are people who understand and peddle politics to the masses. The correct name for these people is politicians. Politicians are extremely important, as they decide how best to spend the taxpayers' money, and also when and with whom countries should go to war. They are essential for protecting us all from weapons of mass destruction, both real and imagined. Politics is also the international currency. With the careful use of politics, countries are able to trade with each other. Every country has its own particular commodity to offer. South Africa is renowned globally for its reserves of gold and racism and the major exports of Greece are olives, tall tales, and homosexuality. Here's proven non-pedophile Matthew Kelly indulging in an olive now. Mmm, that looks tasty, Matthew. Don't forget to thank the Greeks. So, now you should be fluent in politics, the global language.